Today's topic of conversation is my predictions for the F1 2019 driver lineups. This is early. This is very, very early. We've only had one race so far in the 2018 season, but that's why. I want to get my predictions in nice and early before any driver, pretty much, has been announced, any pairing has been announced, just to make this as open as generally possible. On this channel, I love to do controversial videos. It seems to be my thing at the moment especially my 2018 reviews video, very, very controversial. Some people hating, some people loving. Very, very mixed bag of uh, opinions there. But I thought today I'll do my 2019 driver lineups, something that definitely is going to spark some debate in the comments. And I think there's definitely some drivers here you wouldn't expect to be swapping seats and coming into the sport. One rookie and a returning driver. Who do you think they're going to be? Chuck it down in the comments below. But let's start off with the reigning world champs. Mercedes most likely going to be world champions again this year. And they've got a bit of a dilemma on their hands. They've got one driver, Lewis Hamilton, who hasn't yet signed a contract for next season. However, I am going to predict that he will be there next season. I think we're all pretty confident of that. I imagine it'll be a three-year deal just so that he can try and reach that seven world championships mark that Michael Schumacher is on, and then he'll have the option as well to make it eight. So I think he definitely will do that, and although he says that he doesn't like chasing the records, I think he definitely does. But the debate then comes with the second seat at Mercedes. Obviously Valtteri Bottas there this season, was there last season as well, but hasn't proved his doubters yet. And if the first race of the season is anything to go by, he's on for another really difficult year, unfortunately, for Valtteri. So... What are Mercedes' options then? First of all, they keep Valtteri for a third season. Hamilton's backup guy, just there for the points really, pretty much like Raikkonen is at Ferrari, although this season it looks like Raikkonen might be doing a better job than Bottas. So we saw last season that Ferrari lost the World Championship, in essence, because Raikkonen didn't keep up with Vettel. Obviously it wasn't 100% of the story, but it was a fair amount. And Mercedes are going to need a consistent secondary driver to back up Hamilton. And Bottas, at the end of last season, looked very good, but midway through just got lost. And this season, with three top teams, it's going to be difficult for him to be up there. And do I think he's going to win the race this season? Well, after the first performance, definitely not. So Bottas is an option for Mercedes, but I don't think they'll go for Bottas. I don't think that will happen. Another option, Pascal Verlein. He's their third driver at the moment. Obviously, I think he's a fantastic driver, a great talent. Really, really missing out on him this season in Formula 1. Why he's not in the sport is absolutely criminal. But he's always an option for Mercedes. In his two seasons in Formula 1, has done very, very, very well. And maybe Mercedes are just keeping him so they can have him next season. That is an option. You've also got Esteban Ocon. He's now done one full season in Formula 1, one and a half seasons. Race for Manor in 2016 and 2017 raced for Force India. Looks solid. However, this season, Force India looks like it's lost a bit of its pace. And if Ocon does want to get a move to Mercedes, he's going to have to drag that Force India up into the points on multiple occasions, which will be difficult. And also, he's going to have to outperform his teammate, Sergio Perez. But there's one more choice in my eyes, and one real choice. And it's the choice, I think... It's going to happen. And there you go. There it is. Daniel Ricciardo, I think, will be taking that second Mercedes seat. He's looking for a move out of Red Bull. I think he's, he's had enough. Red Bull obviously setting up Max Verstappen as their number one, their big boy. And it looks very much like he wants out. And the two main candidates for that, obviously, are Ferrari and Mercedes. Arguably McLaren and Renault as well. You could put those in the mix. But I think Mercedes and Ferrari are Daniel's number one choices. I'm going to put him in Mercedes. I think he would fit in with that environment a lot more. And I think would be a great teammate to Hamilton. I think also Mercedes is the more attractive option. They've had the best car now since 2014. And I think he would fit in really well. Again, Ocon, Verline, Bottas, they're all options. But I think for the 2019 season, Mercedes' driver lineup will be Lewis Hamilton and Daniel Ricciardo. Moving on to Ferrari then. 
Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel is their man. The number five driver, he'll be in, no matter what. Sebastian Vettel will be driving for Ferrari next season. But it's that, once again, that second seat, which is very much in debate. Now, Mercedes and Ferrari, these second driver seats, they are huge for the driver market. If they keep the same, then most of the rest of the teams will keep their drivers. But in this video, both of them I have swapped and it's really cascaded across the whole grid, all of the changes. But if you didn't see, I did put out a video who will replace Kimi Raikkonen and that describes my thoughts about Raikkonen potentially staying for 2019. And after that Australian Grand Prix, it's very possible that he could stay for 2019. Look very, very solid, look quicker than Sebastian for most of the race. And if Raikkonen keeps up that pace this season, could very well be there, very well be there next season. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case, unfortunately. Um, over the past couple of seasons, he's really, really not been there with Sebastian. And like I said a minute ago, it could be argued that they didn't win the Constructors because Raikkonen wasn't quick enough. So, let's say Raikkonen's gone. Raikkonen retires at the end of the season. Who's going to replace him? And like I went through in that video, who will replace Kimi Raikkonen, I looked at Charles Leclerc, think he'll need a bit more time to grow, and there's definitely different options for him. Now, other candidates I went through, Sergio Perez, he's looking for an out out of Force India in my mind, and Ferrari, very, very attractive option, isn't it? But I eventually chose and pretty much went with Roman Grosjean. Love the guy. I think he's my favourite driver in F1. Supported him now since 2012. Lotus with my team. Grosjean was the man. And I think he'll be perfect to replace Kimi Raikkonen. He won't be edging over Sebastian Vettel. He won't want the need from the team to be looked after all the time. Like a Charles Leclerc might do. Grosjean will be his complete own driver. He'll be very, very consistent with the points. And it wouldn't surprise me if he picked up a couple of wins. And it could be argued that I'm looking through a biased glass here because I love the man. He's, he's a fantastic driver. Crucially underrated, in my opinion. Like I said, really consistent. Did have a tendency to get involved in the odd crash at the beginning of his career. But I think the pairing of Grosjean and Vettel at Ferrari would be a good one. And it is arguable that the only reason Grosjean went to Haas in the first place was to get that Ferrari link. And I think... Just to round off Grosjean's career, because he is near in the end now, Ferrari could be the place for him to end it. And maybe it's one or two seasons, and then after that, Leclerc takes his place. I think that's probably what would happen, in my opinion. But for 2019, I'm going to predict Sebastian Vettel and Roman Grosjean will be at Ferrari. Moving on to Red Bull, then. We're already about eight minutes into this video. It's going to be a long one, and I can imagine already... Debates are sparking in the comments. And Red Bull, they're going to keep Max Verstappen. He's their star man. He really is. He's a world-class driver. Perhaps one of the best on the grid. Well, he definitely is one of the best on the grid. But is he the best? That's debatable. Still got time to grow, though, and he's definitely up there. But with Ricardo moving to Mercedes, that means Red Bull have to find a new driver. Obviously, you've got Hartley and Gasly at Toro Rosso. But the obvious man is Carlos Sainz, another one of my favourites on the grid. Is he ready for the Red Bull seat? He was outperformed by Max Verstappen in those two seasons together, or one and a half seasons together. Although, Carlos was more consistent, in my personal opinion. More consistent in where he was each race, rather than one race being outstanding, one race not so much. Again, Verstappen as well. Some races for Verstappen went very well, but would there be incidents? Like Monaco going to the back of Grosjean, those sort of things, Carlos never had. He had a much more consistent point scoring record, but they were never as high up. So I think Carlos is ready for that Red Bull seat. Not the best start to the season in Australia, but there were issues there with nausea and the water system, his drinks water that is, constantly going into his mouth and horrendous stuff it sounds like but Carlos in my opinion is a great driver but once again this season he's gonna have to prove that he is quicker than Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg is a great driver and 
for sure, I think he's one of the best who's never got a podium. But I think Carlos Sainz is pretty much there with Hülkenberg. And if Sainz can outperform Hülkenberg, there's no doubt he'll go to Red Bull. And I think if Ricardo does leave, Sainz 100% will be in that seat. 100%. If you didn't know, Sainz is still under contract at Red Bull and is only on loan at Renault. And so Sainz for 2019, I'm going to say, will be at Red Bull with Max Verstappen. Pretty straightforward, that one, to be perfectly honest with you. Red Bull slowing down the Red Bull driver program 100% for sure. Evidenced by the fact that Hartley is in the Torosso. But I think Sykes will be at Red Bull. McLaren. Now, big questions need to be asked at McLaren. Fernando Alonso is obviously the big main question that needs to be asked there. And the reason being is, will he be in F1 next year? You know, the past few seasons, he's been looking at an out, really. That McLaren Honda's been awful. And he's even said he was ready to leave at the end of last season. It was only when the Renault deal was sorted that he decided to stay with McLaren. Now, will he stay for another season? Well, let's look at the other driver quickly. Stoffel van Dorn, he'll be in. He will definitely be in that team next season. As proved to be fairly close to Alonso, and considering Alonso is many people's top driver on the grid, Van Dorn has actually done a solid job on the quiet. And the first race of the season did look good. Not quite as quick as Alonso, but still pretty good. And again, he is pretty much one of their chosen drivers. The issue for McLaren, though, comes with the Formula 2 drivers. And that is Lando Norris. He's obviously their future Lewis Hamilton, if you will. And pretty much, if he wins Formula 2 this season, which I think he definitely could do, they're going to be with a bit of a dilemma. Do they put him in straight away and replace Alonso? That could be very good for them economically. Alonso is one of the highest paid drivers. And Alonso, like I say, would probably be willing to step down. But will he be willing is the real question. I think it's all going to depend on at the very end of the season where McLaren are. How early in their development schedule, they move on to the 2019 car. And I imagine by the summer, we'll have a real idea of whether Alonso will be in the sport or not. So 100%, it'll be Alonso or Norris in that seat, and the other one will be Van Dorn. But I'm going to predict Fernando Alonso will stay for one more season. He'll pray that they'll be at the front of the grid, and that World Championship could be his. But this season, it does look a bit far off. Definitely looks a bit far-fetched that uh, McLaren are going to be anywhere near winning races, even at the end of the season. So for them, I think an early switch to a development for the 2019 car is needed. And that will cause Fernando to stay just for one more year. And Norris will act like a third driver sort of thing, just like Van Dorn did in 2016. And then if Alonso quits halfway through the season, which he could do always, then Norris can just go in. I think that's definitely what's going to happen over at McLaren. Moving on to Renault. One of the four works teams on the grid. They have a solid lineup this year. Hülkenberg and Sainz. But as we've already said, Sainz has gone back to Red Bull. So we've got a seat to fill and we've got plenty of drivers to fill it. The first is Valtteri Bottas. Now, like I said earlier, he's out at Mercedes, in my opinion, in this theoretical 2019 lineup. He's out at Mercedes, so he's got limited options. And Renault are one of the top teams that need a driver. Do I think Bottas will go there? I think there's a high chance. I really do think there's a high chance. Also, Sergio Perez, I've said he's probably looking for an out at Force India. They're a team that looked to be going backwards, and I think Perez would like to have a different teammate than Esteban Ocon. If you don't know, those two do not get on well. And we do know that Perez does get on well with Nico Hülkenberg. The only thing for me, though, is that Bottas and Perez don't have age on their side. And Renault are a team that are going to be pushing forward. And in my opinion, it would be a great time for them to get in a rookie, a brand new driver. In my opinion, it was very close between this rookie and Valtteri Bottas and Either of them could really fit in at Renault. But I've gone with Jack Aitken. 
the Brit. Oh yeah, sorry as well for that <laughs> that atrocious Photoshop on Aitken's face. That yeah, we'll just forget that. But there it is, Jack Aitken and Nico Hulkenberg. Aitken was runner-up in GP3 last year, and this year will be racing for ART in Formula 2. Renault Young Driver looks very, very quick indeed, and at one point, he will be an F1. And, like I mentioned, it's a real toss-up between Bottas and Aitken. And, as much as Bottas is a race winner, he's proven, I think Hulkenberg could be quicker. And I think Renault will know that. And with Bottas's ties to Mercedes, obviously he's at Mercedes now, was at Williams beforehand, I think Renault would rather look at a brand new driver, a bit like Williams have done in the past couple of years, a bit like Force India have with Perez and Ocon, the Williams example with Stroll and Massa. I think Renault will just go for it. They'll take a gamble. They've, for the past couple of seasons, had a dodgy driver in Jolien Palmer, they took a gamble on him. It didn't quite work. This season, they've taken, not a gamble really, but they've got a solid lineup. And I think next season, they can take a gamble again. Why not? And I think Jack Aitken could really be that guy to step into Renault. So my prediction is Jack Aitken will be in Renault for 2019. It'd be nice as well to see a second British driver on the grid, because obviously this season, we've only got the one with Lewis Hamilton. So it'd be great to see some of Formula 1's rising stars entering F1 next season. Moving on to the big movers this season, arguably a top team now, which is interesting to say, and that's Haas F1 team. Great winter testing, disappointing start to the season, running 4th and 6th for most of the race until both cars DNF through the pit stops, absolutely gutting. But as I said earlier, Roman Grosjean's gone, and you can start to see... With those Mercedes and Ferrari seats being empty, how much of a cascade that changes the whole grid? It's pretty insane. Anyways, Haas, they've got a space to fill. And do they keep Magnussen? Very interesting questions, really are. And first of all, Magnussen is an, is a, is an okay driver, in my opinion. Last season I was not impressed, but when he was driving for Renault and McLaren, I thought it was alright. Last season, like I say, he was a bit aggressive, but after the Australian Grand Prix, looked solid. So I think Magnussen will most likely stay, but what has his other options? So Charles Leclerc at Alpha Salbert for this season. Will he move or take that step up to the next Ferrari team? Arguably, Ferrari have a B team and a C team. B team being Haas, C team being Alpha Salbert now. I think they'll just keep him at Sauber. I think that's probably most likely what's going to happen. But there's always the chance that they'll give Leclerc a go at fighting for podiums. There's always that chance. And if Leclerc proves to be as good as Verstappen was, then I'm pretty confident they will do it. But I've not gone with Leclerc. Unfortunately, another option as well is Antonio Giovinazzi has tested with Haas and again is a Ferrari young driver who's looking to get an F1. But I've not gone with him either. The other option is Sergio Perez. Obviously, I've mentioned him a few times now looking for an out at Force India. And I think looking at his mannerisms off track, I think he's a bit gutted where Force India are. He can see that his career is coming to an end and... For him, it's probably just frustrating that he never, ever got his chance. He had one season at McLaren. Didn't go all that badly. McLaren had an awful car that year. And they pretty much tossed him aside straight away. So, I think it's definitely possible that he could be in at Haas. Alongside Magnussen. I think it definitely could happen. That would be a pretty solid lineup as well. Perez is arguably as good as Grosjean. It will help expand their team in the North American market with Perez being from Mexico. And that could be a good thing for US-Mexico relations. However, that as well could be a drawback. But like I say, Perez is looking for an out. I think the best option for him is Haas. I think it's probably the most realistic. But once again, this all depends on how good Charles Leclerc is. But I think 
Perez and Magnussen will be at Haas for the 2019 season. That one is a very difficult one to call, 100%. Probably the hardest one on the grid, I would say. Pretty, pretty difficult to fill that second seat with Grosjean gone. Moving on then to Force India. Really, really tough start to the season. Awful testing in the fact they didn't even bring this year's car to test in, which is never, ever a good move, never would be recommended. Who are, they going to, who are their drivers going to be for this season? Esteban Ocon will stay. Force India will be his best option. The higher or the second highest Mercedes team, which is very weird to say that there's only one Mercedes team consistently getting in the points, or looks like it's going to happen across the season, which is a good step in a way that the engine formula has pretty much gone now, which is, like I say, nice to see. But Force India will be gutted where they are or where they were at the beginning of the season. And Ocon, like I say, we will stay. There's no way Ocon's gone because it's the best option for him. But it's that second driver that is the real question once again. Because Perez, like I say, he's gone to Haas. But again, it could be that Perez stays and Force India stays as it is for a third season in a row. All depends on Leclerc. So as you can see, there's just a couple of drivers in the whole field, Raikkonen, Bottas and Leclerc, that really dictate the whole grid. And it's very difficult to try and predict what's going on. But Force India, like I've said, I've put Perez in Haas. Who's going to be taking that second seat? Now, there's a couple of suggestions. Only two, really. George Russell is one of them. He is in Formula 2 for this season, also racing for ART. Jack Aitken's teammate. And George Russell was first in GP3 last season. Mercedes young driver, tested for Force India last season at the Abu Dhabi test at the end of the season. And he has strong links with that team. But there's only one man that I think will get the seat, really. And that's if Perez goes, Pascal Verlein. He'll be in at Force India. I've got a love, I've got a lot of love for this guy. A fantastic driver. Missed out that he's not in the sport this season. It's so silly that he's not in the sport. But, like I said earlier, he is the Mercedes third driver. And he is quick. I When he was in the sport, teammates with Ocon, he was quicker than Ocon. The only reason he didn't get that Force India seat, arguably, was because of his work ethic, apparently. So, that's a bit gutting to hear, though when you see him on the media, he was never sulky, never mad, always a great attitude, and he was a damn quick driver, like I say, and I think he deserves a chance back in Formula 1. I've also said as well, if he doesn't get back in Formula 1, he'll be with Mercedes in Formula E for sure, but I'd love to see him back in Formula 1 because he should be. That's where he should be. And Force India, unfortunately, is the second highest Mercedes team. But Verline, I'm sticking him back in for 2019. Verline, you're back. And that is Force India's 2019 lineup. So, some controversial ones at about just over the halfway point, actually, we are now. Only three teams to go. And once again, it's so difficult to predict, especially so early on in the season, not seeing how good drivers are. Like I say, if I did this at the end of the season, which I might very well do, or at the summer break, Charles Leclerc definitely could be one of the best drivers we've ever seen. But after that first race performance, it's difficult to really say anything. Moving on then to Williams after that little, little break there for a second. Williams, again, a difficult one to call. Two rookies in the past two years, Stroll and Sorokin. They're the two drivers for this season. Sorokin looked awful in the first race of the season, really did. Not impressed at all with Sergei Sorokin. Lance Stroll, again, I think he's okay. I don't think he's the worst on the grid. I think that honour now goes to Sorokin. After, after one race, I shouldn't really say that, but he did look bad. And... I don't think he'll be there at the middle of the season, yet alone at the end. But let's say that he is. What are Williams' options? Well, one is Robert Kubica. I think it's very likely that he'll be in halfway through 
in the season. I really do think that could happen. That would be a great boost for Williams. It will encourage sponsors over to that team for sure because that's what they need. Martini obviously out next season and so Williams are about to go in to a very difficult time in Formula 1 and they need to find some magic if they want to restore that team. So who are they going to get? Like I said, Kubica, definitely an option. Sorokin, also an option, although I don't think he's going to give them the support they need for them to go up any higher on the grid and fix this, what could be described as a sinking ship. Again, you've got Pascal Verline. If he doesn't go to Force India, he is an option. Comes with the Mercedes back in, like I've said several times, a, a fantastic talent, and he could push them further up the grid. Oliver Rowland is an option as well. Not yet confirmed for Formula 2 this season, although I'd be surprised if he wasn't there. He's the Williams third driver. Multiple race winner last season in Formula 2. Not quite as quick as Leclerc, for sure, but still a solid option. He's not the youngest Ollie Rowland, but he definitely could be taking that Williams seat. However, if you haven't realised, there's only one real option. Looking at where drivers have all gone in my so far predictions, there's one man who's still without a seat, and that's Valtteri Bottas. Back to Williams, the Mercedes routes, that's what Williams need. They need a driver they can rely on week in, week out. They haven't really had that since Bottas left. Even Massa was solid, but some weekends would, would get lost. And Bottas, it would be a, obviously a huge step back, absolutely huge. But for Williams, it's what they need. And I think they need to put in all their resources to get in Bottas back into that team if Bottas does leave Mercedes. And Valtteri, like I said, could easily look at other options like Renault. However, I think Williams will be Bottas's new home, which is arguably his old home. But Bottas alongside Lance Stroll was what their lineup was going to be last season. So for Williams, it'll be a little diversion, but I think it's what they need to get back near the front. It's going to be difficult, but once they've got their driver line sort lineup sorted, that's going to help loads. Because their development this year is going to be so difficult with two inexperienced drivers really trying to shape development. And so Bottas is what they need, in my opinion. And for Valtteri, I think it's arguably one of his best options he could pick. So big step back for Valtteri Bottas. But Toro Rosso, Toro Rosso Honda, what are they going to do? Well, there's a few Honda young drivers coming in in lower categories. And they could always explore that option. Nobuharu Matushita, he was a... Honda young driver, although it looks like he's not got a seat in Formula 2 this year, so that's him off the chopping blocks. Now, have Red Bull got any young drivers? Well, not particularly. Nico Carey was definitely there in the lower formulas. He's not got a place in Formula 2 either this season, and again, the Red Bull programme looks to be shutting down, and so you've got to think who the Red Bull want in their secondary team and who the Honda want, and... I was really scratching my brains for Toro, so they seem to be a little bit of a dying team, trying to, Red Bull trying to get rid of them, Honda trying to buy them out, so the pairing I've actually gone with, surprisingly, is Gasly and Holly. <laughs> Same as this season. I'm, to be honest with you, I think Gasly is in. Um, young driver, definitely shown his talent in lower formulas, winning Formula 2, or GP2 Championship then it was called. Hartley, not too sure. I've been a bit critical of him. But looks like when he doesn't have reliability issues, which is 99% of the time, he is as quick as Gasly. And arguably, Hartley shouldn't be an F1. Okay, He was very, very bad when he tested for them initially. That's why he never, ever got a chance. And other drivers perhaps deserve that seat more. Obviously, Hartley has won Le Mans and done things elsewhere, but they're not single-seaters. Another option for Toro Rosso, in my mind, which would be a first for Formula 1, is if they looked over to Formula E. Now, that's a scary prospect, but Sebastian Buemi and John Verne, Formula Toro Rosso drivers, are doing good things over there. 
and Verne especially looks very very good in Formula E looks like the best driver in that series and was very good when he was in Formula 1 and arguably missed out on a chance to get into Red Bull unfairly really and Verne has mentioned that it's very strange that Hartley is with Toro Rosso and him and Boemi are not there and I agree and I think you could easily see Hartley replaced with jean Verne Verne for next season. Wouldn't that be an interest? That would be a great story for Formula 1. Would Verne want to switch back to Formula 1 from Formula E? It'd be awful for Formula E. It really would. But I think it could happen. If Verne wins the Formula E championship this season, perhaps not. But it's a possibility. But I am going to predict. I'm going to go safe with Toro so, And I'm going to predict they keep the same lineup. But if anything, they will get rid of Hartley. But it's very difficult because Torosso, a bit like Force India, it's very difficult to know what the actual team are going to be doing and whether they'll still be in the sport for next season. So my prediction for them is Gasly and Hartley. But if, if Vern does get up that seat, I told you first. <laughs> All right, anyways, moving on to the final team on the grid, and that's Alpha Sauber. Three candidates that pretty much were the candidates last season, in my opinion, Charles Leclerc, Marcus Ericsson and Antonio Giovinazzi. Leclerc is in, for sure. For sure Leclerc is in. I haven't put him anywhere else, and there's no way he's not going to be in there. Even if he's awful all season long, he's there. He's going to be at Alfa Salva. The other issue is who's going to be that other driver. And Ericsson and Giovinazzi, it's a tough one to weigh up, but... I've gone with Ericsson, surprisingly. Um, I didn't think I'd be saying that, especially considering last season, I was saying how it should be Leclerc and Giovinazzi. But I've put my thinking hat on. I really have, and I've thought, well, Leclerc's going to be moving on anyway after the 29 season, 2019 season or the 2018 season. So what they can't do is put in Giovinazzi and Leclerc, and then after Leclerc leaves... It'll be Giovinazzi and then another rookie, or Giovinazzi and some random geezer. So, I think for Alpha Sauber, it's sensible just to keep Ericsson in that team. Obviously, a lot of backing comes his way, and looking at Australia, Ericsson was quicker than Leclerc, which was very interesting to see for sure. And, I mean, just proves that Pascal Verlon is that good. Uh, <laughs> always got to put in that, but Ericsson... He's not a bad driver, really. He's never had the chance, really, to prove his skills that much. Always been pretty much the worst team on the grid every season, bar one. And, bless him, I've, I've given him another chance. He's, he's, one of the, he's been in the sport since 2013, I think, now. He's one of the longest-serving F1 drivers on the grid, unbelievably. But you just wouldn't know it. Because he's, he's just at the back, bless him, and... Like I say, I've put him in because it would be the sensible option for Alpha Salba because they have Ericsson. Leclerc will move on and then they can have Giovinazzi as their guy. I think that's what will happen. But for 2019, I've done Ericsson and Leclerc at Alpha Salba. So that's the whole grid done then. I'm not going to lie. I'm not 100% convinced by my own opinions. A lot of them are definitely 50-50 debates and you just sort of got to... For the sake of the video, just sort of chuck it in there. Just have a go, have a guess. And definitely the Haas seat and the Renault seat are the two I'm looking at and I'm really thinking, have I made the right decisions there? You know, uh, as well as Ferrari, I think Ricardo is, is definitely an option, so I'm not too worried about that one. But grows on to Ferrari, I think it, it would be sensible for sure, but it's a, a difficult one to really say. And like Renault, Bottas... As a driver, it's very hard to put anywhere. Some people rate him higher than others. I don't think he's the worst on the grid, like I say. And he's definitely got credentials. Winning three Formula 1 races, three pole positions, you can't really argue with that. But, once again, is he suitable for Renault, for Haas? The Perez situation. Will Haas go with Perez or will Leclerc go there? You know, so it, this isn't like the predictions video where you can just sort of throw down what you think. Because this one, you do need more time to think about it. 
And whereas a normal just season predictions, if you get a couple wrong, that's not really a huge issue. The driver one is, I, I don't know, I don't know what I really know what I'm on, but I, basically I just think it's a lot harder to do the driver one, just because there's so many variables, and just because I'm doing it so early on in the season. And while I've been doing this, I do think I'm going to do this again at maybe the summer break. I think that probably would be sensible. A few teams would be in then. But it'd be interesting to see if I got those teams right. And looking at the end of the season, how many of these I got right? Hopefully all of them. That would be pretty insane. But who knows? Who knows whatsoever? Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And if you've actually watched all the way through, that is absolutely mega. So cheers for that. Recently, YouTube's been screwing me over a bit. Obviously, there was that announcement to the change to subscription boxes. If you subscribe to someone, it won't even come up on your subscription feeds sometimes, which is just stupid. And it's really hurt smaller channels like myself. And it's really annoying that I've only started off and I'm already being destroyed by YouTube. They're trying to shut me down already, which is which is fun. Um, they already they turned off the fact that you have to have a thousand subscribers for for your earning any revenue. It's not a huge thing, but it's just little things like that. They're really trying to destroy smaller channels at the moment. It definitely feels like it anyway, which is which is a big pain. So if you have made it this far, that is really really helpful. The recent videos have been hit really badly, and it's not even the topic either. F1 Weekly this week this week got nowhere near as much as it usually does, so really frustrating. So if you do enjoy the content, please do that notification bell. It means a lot. We do daily videos here, except the last few days as well. YouTube's been mugging me off by blocking content worldwide, despite I've actually acted under the correct terms and conditions of copyright. So I've had to dispute them, and they're going to go through, but they're going to take so long. Oh, it's uh, an interesting time on YouTube for sure. But like I say, if you guys have got this far, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you could like, subscribe and hit that notification bell, that would be much appreciated. I am on Twitter now as well. Just shut that in as well. As much plugs as possible. I am on Twitter now. So if you follow me over there, I put up... Well, I was going to say I put up all sorts of bits and bobs, but I generally just tell you when videos are coming out. I'm very new to Twitter, so it's a whole new world of exploration. But guys, as I say, like, subscribe, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.